Welcome back. Friday saw two major developments in the investigation of the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Former Trump advisor Steve Bannon was indicted by a federal grand jury on two counts of contempt of Congress for refusing to comply with a congressional subpoena. Bannon is expected to turn himself in tomorrow. Earlier on Friday, former Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows also defied a subpoena, and the January 6th committee said it is considering holding him in contempt of Congress as well. So joining me now is a member of that committee. It's Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Congressman Schiff, welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Thank you. Great to be with you. All right, let's start with the ban and indictment. Um, do you believe that this will shake loose others who are not cooperating right now to cooperate, knowing that the Justice Department isn't afraid to uh, indict uh, these folks for contempt of Congress? Without a doubt. Uh, and indeed, even before the Justice Department acted, uh, it influenced other witnesses uh, who were not going to be Steve Bannon. Uh, and now that uh, witnesses see that if they don't cooperate, if they don't uh, fulfill their lawful duty when subpoenaed, uh, that they too may be prosecuted, uh, it will have a very strong focusing effect uh, on their decision making. So it's very positive. I view this as an early test of whether our democracy was recovering. Mm -hmm. uh, if our laws to mean anything it has to be applied equally uh, and so i'm very glad the justice department has moved forward in this fashion are you at all concerned that mr bannon appears to enjoy being looked at as a martyr in mega world and because he could get convicted serve time and still never be forced to testify uh, no, that is true. Uh, and I'm concerned, frankly, of what that represents. Basically, that the Republican Party at the top levels, that is Donald Trump uh, and those around him, seem to feel that uh, they're above the law and free to thwart it. And there's something admirable about thumbing your nose at uh, the institutions of our government. Uh, and look, Bannon uh, did what he did because for four years, uh, that's what worked. They could hold Republican Party conventions on the White House grounds. They could fire inspector generals. They could retaliate against whistleblowers. It was essentially a lawless presidency, and they were proud of it. Uh, and yes, that ought to concern every American. Uh, we need a reestablishment of the rule of law in this country, and I'm glad to see that that's, uh, that's happening. You know, in the statement from the uh, co-chairs, um, the, the chair and vice chair, Thompson and Cheney, they wrote about Mark Meadows. Mr. Meadows' actions today, choosing to defy the law, will force the select committee to consider pursuing contempt or other proceedings to enforce the subpoena. Why is it only under consideration? He defied the subpoena. How is it not automatic? Well, you know, we have been moving very quickly to make these decisions, and I'm confident we'll move very quickly with respect to Mr. Meadows also. But we want to make sure that we have the strongest possible case uh, to present to the Justice Department and for the Justice Department to present uh, to a grand jury. Uh, and that means making sure that we bend over backwards to reach any agreement mm -hmm. we can with witnesses uh, that are showing any willingness to engage. Uh, but when ultimately witnesses decide, as Meadows has, yeah. that they're not even going to bother showing up, that they have that much contempt for the law, then it pretty much forces our hand and we'll move quickly. Jamie Raskin, who's also a member of your committee, has said he's open to the idea of limited immunity in exchange for this testimony, even for Mr. Bannon. Uh, are you there? Uh, you know, it'll have to be made uh, on a case by that decision on a case by case basis. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to prevent the Justice Department from prosecuting people who committed criminal conduct, for example, on January 6th by giving them immunity to testify before our committee. So we have to weigh whatever equities the Justice Department and the justice system may have. Yeah. But I think with certain specific witnesses, we ought to consider it. Um, but uh, but as that kind of immunity makes it very difficult to prosecute, uh, not just them, but sometimes others, we need to think about it very carefully. Look, it's pretty clear what the strategy is here. Delay, delay, delay in order to try to run out the clock in the investigation. How are you going to combat this? Well, first of all, the, the fact that the Justice Department has moved as quickly as it did is really helpful. Uh, because, as I mentioned, that's already having an effect on other witnesses who are coming forward and not choosing to go to jail, as uh, Steve Bannon uh, may. 
but also in the civil litigation over our effort to get documents from the archives, the courts themselves have recognized that Donald yeah. Trump essentially played our institutions for four years and played rope a dope in the courts and moved with such expedition uh, to yeah. reject Trump's claims in the district court uh, a week or so ago. Now the Court of Appeals is saying they're going to have a hearing by the end of the month. Courts don't generally move that fast, and I think it's a recognition that Donald Trump has relied on justice okay. delayed, meaning justice de denied. So we and the courts are moving quickly. Uh, I want to ask you something about the Steele dossier because it has been in the news for a lot of uh, other reasons, including some questions about its validity. Uh, I want to play some uh, recent uh, uh, pre uh, sound that you had on the Steele dossier over the years. Take a listen. According to Christopher Steele, a British, a former British intelligence officer, who is reportedly held in high regard by U.S. intelligence. When you look at just what has become public, uh, some of the public information is very much in line with what is reported in that dossier. The most significant thing to me is that Christopher Steele may have found out, even before our own intelligence agencies, that the Russians were in fact aiming to help Donald Trump in the election. As chair of the House Intelligence Committee, do you regret giving some credibility to the Steele dossier before anybody had been able to verify anything in that. A lot of those clips were done before there was any good verification. Look, there's some news organizations that made the mistake of publishing this dossier without verifying it. That's a separate conversation for those news organizations. But you helped give it credibility. Do you regret it? I don't regret saying that we should investigate claims of someone who, frankly, was a well-respected British intelligence uh, officer. Uh, and we couldn't have known, of course, years ago that we would year learn years later that someone who was a primary source lied to him. But what I just said, the clip you just played, uh, uh, ends up being exactly right, which is uh, Steele did reveal that the Russians were trying to help elect Donald Trump. That turned out to be all too true. Uh, and in fact, the Trump campaign chairman was giving internal campaign polling data to Russian intelligence while Russian intelligence was trying to help elect Donald Trump. So the, the top line there of Russian help uh, and Trump willingness to accept it, make use of it, proved all too accurate. Okay, the, the summary was accurate, but the details were incorrect. That does undermine the credibility, does it not? Well, certainly. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, Danchenko lied to Christopher Steele and then lied to the FBI. He should be prosecuted. He is being prosecuted. And I'll tell you this, if he's convicted, he should not be pardoned. The way Donald Trump pardoned people who lied to FBI agents like Roger Stone and, and Mike Flynn. So there ought to be uh, uh, the same standard in, in terms of prosecuting the okay. liars. But I don't think there ought to be any pardon, no matter which way the lies cut. Congressman Adam Schiff, Democrat from California, a member of the January 6th Committee. Appreciate you coming on, sharing your perspective with us, sir.